What's going on everyone? So today we're going to be putting together one of the dopest aquarium stands that I've ever done. I'm looking to bring a lot of unique features and just different things that I can add on that'll make my life a lot easier when I'm doing maintenance around the tank. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. So after reviewing a few options on what materials that I can use for an aquarium stand, I decided to go with framing tech. I've seen a few YouTubers use it in the past, Tristan Reeves being one of them. Um, his build came out perfect. It came out really, really great. Um, it was very impressive for me. And I felt like that style of stand would be perfect with my design. So after reaching out to Framing Tech and starting conversations with them, I found out that their process is a little bit more detailed than uh, what you would normally expect, which is just putting together a few pieces of metal, building a stand and putting a tank on top of it. Uh, but they actually go a little bit more detailed into making sure the dimensions of the stand that you want uh, can actually hold the aquarium that you want to put on top of it. They do what's called a weight distribution analysis, and basically it's a software that they use to create an environment where they can put the weight of the aquarium on top of the dimensions of the stand that you want, and it'll show how the stand will react to that weight. Seeing that process come together became very important to me. It's a small step that I think can play a major role in the longevity of your aquarium. So hats off to Framing Tech for taking the extra step and reassuring my peace of mind. I would definitely go out on a limb and say that any reefer that wants to stay in the hobby for a long time, you should consider building your stand with Framing Tech. So jumping right into the build, the first thing that I needed to do was clear the space where I decided to put the new aquarium. And then it was on to bringing in all of the packages and opening them up to see all of the pieces that we had to work with. Now, one of the things that I like to do is lay all of the pieces out in front of me, just organize them and make sure that I have everything accounted for for the project. The last thing that I want to do is get halfway through the project only to find out that I'm missing some very important pieces. Once I had everything unpacked, I organized them by size and type so that I can cross check them with a packing slip and make sure everything was there. Taking a first look at the framing tech material, the aluminum was very sturdy and everything looked very polished and clean. The connections looked very self-explanatory and it felt like I was going to be able to easily install and put everything together. Now one of the reps over at Framing Tech, Anthony, shout out to him, he told me a joke when we were discussing the build plans. He said that if I ever decided to get out of the reefing hobby, I could keep the stand and park my car on top of it. <laughs> I definitely understood what he was talking about as soon as I held it in my hand. It definitely took away any worry that I had uh, when it comes to the stand being able to hold my aquarium. So the next thing that I did was measured each piece separately. I just wanted to make sure that we had the right dimensions for the stand based off the original build plans. What we went with was a 56 inch long by 30 inch front to back by 36 inch tall stand. Uh, even though the tank is only 48 inches, I went 56 because I wanted to give myself a little bit more space underneath the stand to accommodate for the large refugium that we're gonna have and also the control panel towers that I added in the build plans. Getting started, I don't think that there's a right or wrong way that you can do this, whether you decide to start from the bottom and work your way up or start from the top and work your way down. Uh, but I decided to start from the bottom. I laid out the pieces, the longer pieces first, and then slid in the braces in between. I then measured in between each brace just to make sure that I was as close as possible to the measurements on the diagram. I didn't want to go too far from how it was designed during the weight distribution analysis just to make sure I didn't compromise any of the strength or durability. Once I had that completed and I was sure of the spaces, I went ahead and tightened all of the fasteners to secure everything in place. From there it was on to the legs. Now for the legs, this was a much simpler process just because we didn't have to do any more measuring. Since we already measured out the spaces between the bottom braces, it was just a matter of lining each leg up and fastening them down. I repeated the same steps for the front legs. So before
before I move forward, I wanted to quickly show you guys how the fasteners actually work. I did have to go and do a little research on the website just to get a full understanding before I started the project. So basically this top screw is called the hammer and this hammer sits into what they call a set screw. As you tighten the set screw, it'll align the hammer in place. And once you insert that hammer into another piece of aluminum, and you tighten down the set screw, that's what causes there to be a secure fasten between both pieces. Once you do it the first time, it's pretty simple after that. I like the fact that you don't have to stop to look for a drill or insert screws or anything like that, uh, but everything is laid out for you. I even had one of the pieces to fall out and it was very easy to get it back in and line it back up. Um, and that made the process even more simple. So I would definitely say if you're gonna go at Framing Tech, ask for the Quick Connect fasteners. So the next step was to install the top frame and also the top cross supports. And basically all I had to do was align everything up with what we already had laid out. Uh, you'll notice at one point I get stuck and I can't push the beam anymore. That was just because I didn't have the screw loosened enough and the top of the hammer couldn't go inside the other piece of the aluminum. So just make sure when you're working with it, you have the screws loosened uh, just enough so that when you're sliding the beams on or when you're sliding them across, they can go in without a problem. So here's the final product. I have to say that it came together very, very nicely. And I think overall it took me maybe an hour to an hour and a half to put everything together. And that was including the time that it took me to stop and record each step. Now the last piece that we added was these corner braces that are gonna be used to fasten the top panel to the top of the frame. Uh, definitely made for a cleaner install if you're gonna go that route. Now some of you that follow me on Instagram know that I didn't stop here. So let me show you exactly what I did next. So you can see we went with an all white look and basically what I did was I wrapped the framing tech material in a white car vinyl and then I installed a panel on the top, back and bottom and I painted those with topside marine bolt paint. Overall, I'm really happy with how everything came out and I'm looking forward to continuing this build. So thanks for watching this video guys. I uh, look forward to continuing to share the progress of this build and stay tuned for a sneak peek of my next update and a few clips from the Framing Tech warehouse. What's going on guys? Just wanted to give you a quick overview of how the filtration will flow. So it's going to enter in through a one inch drain here. This one will be an emergency into the filter sock section. From there, it's going to enter into the skimmer section. From the skimmer section, it yeah, goes so into you can see the initial phase of the plumbing is done. I did leave open that back bulkhead. That's going to be where my frag system is going to be plumbed in. But for now, since we don't have you can see on this side, I've taped off all the elbows and all the places where the pipes come together. This is just basically going to show me the direction of where the pipe needs to turn and also how far in I should push the pipe once I take it out. All right, guys, so you can see we have the leveler in place. Um, right now, we don't have any water. I'm just doing a dry run, just checking it out and see how it is as it stands. And we're actually looking pretty good. Thank you.